Thank you. It's great to be back. I am. The MFA program there is young and thriving, and uh, it's an exciting place to be. Um, it, it was uh, quite simple, it seems, now that I look back. Um, mm -hmm. Just lots of summer was all about swimming and, and the woods and probably being a lot of places we shouldn't have. Um, I-95 coming through, so we, we hung out a lot on the, the service road and all the fields out there. They do. They rule it. A very different culture, and what I, what I noticed teaching my students up there more and more is that it seemed to be a big difference between urban and rural upbringing. So mm -hmm. I would find myself so taken with these students who had grown up in little towns in Maine or New Hampshire because their stories were much more similar to what I knew um, of small town southern life. I don't know. Um, I mean, I opened my mouth and the answer's undeniable. <laughs> so, I mean, no getting around that. Um, I'm, I'm hoping they're thinking of the fine literary heritage that we can claim and that they're not, you know, questioning hookworm or something of that. No, I haven't. I haven't. And, and so much is based on that oral tradition of storytelling. Um, you know, I've, I've often told people, my, my grandmother and great aunt never could have written what they were able to speak and tell. And, and I remember when in college and first taking creative writing classes, it, I, I was filled almost with a kind of panic to, to get their voices, to get it all down on paper so that, so that I would have it. Because, uh, you know, it only existed in their mouths and the stories they told. I am big on revision, and, and my students sometimes moan and groan to hear <laughs> me say it, but uh, I think that's where the real creative work comes in. You know, I think you have this idea, and you're inspired, and you're excited about it, um, but then the real challenge is getting in there and looking at that idea and shaping and polishing and seeing what works and what doesn't. Revision. I think so, to find the, the, best, the best way mm -hmm. to say it. And oftentimes in that first draft, I'll stumble and just string along a, way more adjectives than, than I would mm -hmm. ever need, um, very much. I, I can't say I've written any that I would show. <laughs> and uh, usually what ends up happening is I just take what is a poem for me and string it into a sentences and a paragraph. But, but I'm big on encouraging my students to read poetry, and I often end a class by reading something to them that I find inspiring. Um, it, it, I guess it's hard to do, but also I think it's an inevitable part of it all. Um, I, th I think with a lot of my early work, there's a lot of comedy, and I enjoy humor, and I'm always looking for humor. But Max Steele here at UNC was my first creative writing teacher, and I remember him one time saying to me, you're a very good puppeteer. And, and I realized, um, you know, I was, I was holding myself way back, yeah. really keeping the heart out of it. And, and I like to think that I have stepped closer and closer to the, to the darker corners. And, and now I, I think as a writer, I'm, I'm most challenged by finding what is that vulnerable or weak spot that a character or a character's life holds. That's a big difference I noticed in New England because I, I would laugh inappropriately by their standards many times. You know, you're used to go into places in the South. I mean, you can be at a funeral and people are still saying things that are funny or remembering funny stories about the life who has passed and, and people join in in laughter. Um, 
in a way that I, I didn't always find up there. I can't imagine being without it. I remember when they did that report, you know, there was that medical report about a year or two ago about how laughter was, was so healthy and good for you. And I called Lee Smith and I said, well, we, we've been working out and we didn't even know it. I, I'm working on a novel and um, I always have a couple of short stories in the hopper. Uh, when I'm teaching stor the story form, it's a lot easier to work with because it's a little more portable. I, I think so. Um, I, the, the story is more contained. I, I started off as a novelist and, and I always wanted to write stories and I just would get, you know, kind of like talking. You start and you can't stop. <laughs> So I was always coming back to the story form, and now I, I'm probably more in story form. My last novel, Carolina Moon, was kind of a fragmented compilation mm -hmm. of stories and characters who overlapped yeah. in life. And the one I'm working on right now is, again, of that, of that format. So it's not just this linear first person by any stretch. I think I'm... I'm very interested in how a, a town or a community works as a kind of character or, or a family and then studying all the parts within. I, I do, mm -hmm. I do. I, and I really first noticed that change in a strong way when my daughter was born, mm -hmm. which, which now is almost 19 years ago, but I, I think becoming a parent, I immediately saw things mm -hmm. from a different angle. And uh, it is a different world. Well, it, it is for me. Um, yeah. I, I, I have told my students often that I can't imagine if you just walked around one day and soaked it all up that you wouldn't have enough to write for the next 10 years. Um, the, you know, there's, there's a story, I think, everywhere you look and you get a group of people together and you uh, start a conversation and everyone has a story or an anecdote that's just slightly different from the next. So you can start with the same topic, but each individual makes his or her story unique by way of the, the history and the local color. I think people love to hear a good story. And uh, it's an art that I, I hope we can just keep fanning and burning brightly. Uh, I, I found in New England, people like to tell stories. You, ju you just have to work on them and loosen them up. I always wrote as a kid, but for me it was an escape. Learned very early um, that I could be in a room all by myself and had the power to make myself laugh or cry or scare myself silly. And um, and I was kind of exhilarated by by that power. But but if you had told me that I could grow up and do something with that, it would have been like telling me I could grow up and, you know, jump on a pogo stick all day and get paid for it. Um, so it was really when I was an undergraduate here at UNC and suddenly exposed to these respected grown-ups who had whole lives built around making up stories, telling stories, teaching stories. So I was a sophomore and um, it hooked and that's all I... Boy, and what a life, talk about a lifesaver. <laughs> I had Max Steele and then Lee Smith and then Louis Rubin and um, the whole, you know, he, he doesn't like to be given all that credit, but, but I have to give it to him because I think he changed the whole course of my life. Well, I, he just encouraged me and nudged me along at a time when I did not have the confidence in myself to, to have ever thought that I could do what he told me. And so when it was time to graduate, um, and you know, other than my creative writing, I was not the world's best student. I mean, 
I'm afraid I might not get into UNC these days. <laughs> but but I, um, it's time to graduate, and I went to Lewis, and I said, you know, I, I don't know what I'm going to do without our class. You know, I'm, I'm really going to miss it. And he said, well, you're going to go to graduate school. And um, so, you know, and I do. I do. I don't know that they'll necessarily write it and publish it, but they've got the stories to tell. And I like to think that, you know, after a good creative writing workshop, that, that if nothing else, people come out with just broader minds and a respect for all the varieties of stories that there are to be told. And more important, the, the varieties of individuals behind those stories and, and what they represent. Well, I think it's, I th it's hard to say how it's changed in 10 years. It's, it's been running strong for a very long time. And um, I, I do think it has a lot to do with the teaching that goes on in this state, the, the encouraging of young writers. Um, I, I, I see it as very positive. I think there's a lot coming out and, and a lot happening. Um, and you know, it's been exciting just recently to sit on, on um, several thesis committees and see what's at the end of the road for these students. And it's fine, publishable work. Um, I can speak to the work on the table and say it's publishable. I can't speak to the, the industry, which seems to be a totally different animal. but. I think so. I, I think early on you see stories much closer um, to, to the personal stories, but, but, but I think that by reading and by what comes to a discussion in a workshop, you can take a story that's tied personally to a student and, and find ways to open the discussion to bigger and broader issues, and that's often what, what does happen. Well, I, I, in my classes, I, I certainly, you know, it's, it's required and encouraged, um, the reading, and yeah, it makes a huge difference. Such an important part. I mean, you know, anyone who wants to write, that would be the first thing I would say, is start reading. Well, you know, it's funny. I love to read, but I was I was more a nonfiction reader early on. Uh, I loved biographies, and that's what I remember. And um, as a young kid, I was just hooked on all the dog and horse mm -hmm. books, uh, Old Yeller and Where the Red Fern Grows, and the Misty books, and then biography and um, and history. I did enjoy a lot. Yeah. I, I, I read as much of the contemporary as I can, but, but I also keep a firm foothold back um, with, with older work that, that did really inspire me because like thinking of my own place growing up, I can go back to those works and feel the inspiration again. So like with, you know, I'm honored always by um, any any reference to Eudora Welty because uh, her work I, I first read her in college in right. my first writing class and and windows flew open because I recognized so much of what she was doing. Mm. I hope we're still what we were. That's I, I like to believe we're still what we were mm. and that we can keep it alive. I know there's a lot of change, but I have to say coming from coming off of, you know, 17 years in New England and getting back to North Carolina, a lot has changed, but, but a lot of what I recognize as home is the same. Well, I'm talking about the land, but I'm also talking about how you can be at Harris Teeter beside a total stranger and have the most wonderful conversation of the day. <laughs> and just, and, you know, very revealing and emotional interactions with people um, and that just wasn't happening, and I, I really missed that part of life. I well, you know, it's hard to say. I never can say page-wise because for me, 
writing a novel is about like putting together a quilt. So I have all these different piles and yeah. There's a natural sense of that closure, but as I say, I love that revision process, and, and sometimes I don't know until I get it all out in front of me exactly what I've got. Well, it is, and it's always thrilling, because I think if I thought too much about how people would react while I was doing it, I, I would be frightened away from it. So, um.